Hey guys, this is Pablo, and today I will be discussing the parasite known as Ophiocordyceps unilateralis. So I'll go over a little information on the parasitic group of fungi which they belong to, known as Cordyceps, but specifically I'll be discussing this species. Uh, the Latin name Ophiocordyceps unilateralis probably doesn't instantly ring a bell when you hear it, but if you're a big fan of the TV series Planet Earth, there actually might be a good chance you know a thing or two about it. So obviously this slide doesn't mean that much to you guys, but I just wanted to show that this parasite is actually a type of fungus. And if you took diversity of life too, you might even remember learning about the division it's classified under, known as Ascomycota. So cordyceps themselves are all endoparasitoids, which as you might know, means that they feed on their host from the inside out and they always kill their host because of it. So what are they endoparasitoids of? Well, they're paras parasitoids of mainly insects and other arthropods and sometimes fungus, but they're never parasitoids of humans. And what's specifically interesting about the cordyceps is that there's thousands of species of them and for each individual species they have a specific insect which they are actually parasitoids of. So for each specific uh, cordyceps species there is a specific insect species which they basically feed on. And as you can see by the pictures, there's a spider, a wasp, a grasshopper, all being infected by a different function, where you can see the fungus actually protruding from their exoskeleton. So just to go over some general stuff, Ophiocordyceps unilateralis is actually the most studied parasitic fungi of all of the species. Uh, these fungi have a relatively small distribution and are located in the tropical rainforest of Thailand, as well as a few Brazilian rainforests. But specifically, this fungus infects uh, carpenter ants of the Campotini tribe and is so potent that it will potentially wipe out entire colonies of ants. Uh, so as you could probably imagine, the life cycles of cordyceps species are particularly interesting. And of course, that includes the life cycle of Ophiocordyceps unilateralis. So it all begins when a spore from the fungus is picked up from an ant of the tribe of Campotini where the spore will penetrate the soft tissue of the ant and go through the tiny holes in its body known as spiracles. So once the spore reaches the inside, it will germinate and form a mycelium, which is essentially a network of vegetative mass that consists of thousands of branches, which are known as hyphae, in case you did not remember from diversity of life. So these hyphae will progressively branch and invade the internal cavity of the ant while simultaneously breaking down and consuming the ant for nutrients. So in other words, the ant is essentially getting digested from the inside out. And if you look at this photo, you can definitely get a good idea of that, what the fungus is doing to the inside of the ant. So the fungus itself will keep digesting the ant until the point where all that remains are vital organs. And it does this basically to keep the, intact, the insect intact for just a couple more hours, where the fungus will actually alter the behavioral patterns of the ant just uh, in order to benefit its own needs. So the fungus will basically have full motor, motor control of the ant and will be able to guide it where to go for the remaining uh, hours of its life. So as it has full motor control, the fungus will actually guide the infected ant to an area that has a suitable temperature and humidity for optimal fungal growth. Once a suitable area is found, the fungus will control the ant to walk over to the underside of a nearby leaf where the ant will be forced to bite onto a vein of the leaf and because of the power of the fungus, the ant won't be able to let go and that is commonly known as the death grip. So this is what a close-up of the death grip looks like and the reason it's called the death grip is because the ant won't be able to eat or do anything that'll help it survive for around four to ten days. It's basically stuck to this leaf. leaf. Its jaws are clamped on and it's not getting off. So during this four to 10 day period where the ant is gripped onto the leaf, the fruiting bodies of the fungus will protrude through the ant's head, releasing the infected spores. These microscopic spores will then drift softly into the wind until they hit the ground, and then they'll be waiting to be picked up by another ant of the Campotini tribe to restart the life cycle over again. So now, because it's not a parasite that infects humans, it's a little hard to talk about prevention but uh, there are some factors which actually control the parasite from infecting the colony. Because this parasite has been infecting the carpenter ants for so long, these ants actually have evolved the ability to detect when an ant is infected in the colony. So uh, an ant will find that infected ant and what it will do is it will bring it away as far away from the colony as 
it possibly can so then the colony isn't at risk of being infected as well as this uh, O unilateralis also suffers from a hyperparasite that makes it so that only six to seven percent of the sporangia are actually viable so this significantly lowers the amount of damage that the parasite can have towards ant colonies and if you didn't know what a hyperparasite is it's basically a parasite which in a par within a parasite So just before I finish talking about all this stuff, I just want to talk a little bit about the importance of cordyceps. Uh, so interestingly enough, because for every species of cordyceps, there is a corresponding species of insect which it infects. Cordyceps are actually very good at balancing populations and maintaining ecosystems in nature. So if an insect is overabundant, it co its corresponding cordyceps will help bring it back to a normal population size. Surprisingly, cordyceps are also very beneficial to human beings and are consumed for medicinal purposes. They have been scientific, scientifically proven to increase the cortisol levels, boost energy levels, and as well as improve endurance, which has benefited athletic performance and also respiratory issues. So cordyceps even have the ability to communicate with other cells and basically turn them on or off, and this helps with programmed cell death, so they can basically tell cancer cells to shut off and this has been proven to basically treat some cancers in the past. And lastly I just have a little YouTube video from Planet Earth for you guys to watch.